And I love, I love, I love it. <sighs> What's up, everyone? How are you guys doing? Um, so I hope everyone has had an amazing day. Everybody has had um, productiveness. I hope everyone has been safe. And yeah, all oh, this heat is hot. Damn. Anyway, so um, I have I woke up this morning or yesterday to some very interesting things on social media as per usual. Um, and this morning I wake up and I'm on a trends list again, which is really depressing and sad and really just sad, you know. But I've kept quiet for a very long time. I have said nothing. I have, I, I told people what happened to me very briefly. I didn't mention anyone's name, um, but you know, things happened. So I'm gonna just try by all means to say this as clearly as I can. And I'm gonna try by all means to be concise. Now, we've had lots of discussions, me and my legal team. My lawyers and I have been back and forth with this for months now. You know, we've been trying to figure out what to do, how to do it. Um, first of all, I never wanted to open a, a case, um, but sometimes everything that you do in your power is not enough because um, you cannot stop. You know, you, justice has to be served at some point. Um, whichever way that is, I, I cannot be the one to dictate how and why and when. So there is still a court case. Um, not a court case. There's a there's a there's a a case that has been opened. It was opened last year. It has not been closed. I have not retracted in any way or form. I have not expressed that to anybody. Um, I've seen that social media has a tendency of saying, like somebody says something and then everybody just runs with it. And that's not what has happened. So there is a rape case. And let me be clear, it's a rape case. The rape is of 2017, September. It took place in Limpopo. And... I won't really go into every detail, but I will give you guys some insight. I don't like going on social media to talk about my private life or things that happened to me. I try to keep out of um, social media and the streets and all that, you know, with my personal stuff, but sometimes it's out of your control like now. Um, so basically what happened was I was asked out by this individual, Jabulani, as most of his friends or whoever call him. Um, this was in June the 19th on my birthday in 2017. And this was following me meeting him the May. It's not like I'd known him, I didn't know who he was, I didn't know him from bars up. Um, I was intrigued. And um, I, I don't even remember what he said specifically, but the next day I was sent a text message saying, I love you. July of that year, 2017, I was um, called by him and telling him, telling me about some woman in his life. And I say some woman, not with any type of disrespect, um, but that's exactly what he had said to me he said to me that there was a woman in his life he had been with her or whatever that was really not my concern and i'd asked him so why are you telling me you know because i hadn't really seen him since the the june i think i'd seen him like once two, once or twice um probably a lot of times was when we we're on the road bumping into him um i would get messages from him telling me to come wherever he was. And that was the nature 
of whatever this whatever he calls a relationship it wasn't a relationship it was nothing intimate it was conversations it was meeting up it, there was nothing intimate you know um and so f that july i blocked him off my phone and um i think i blocked him on like social media and stuff like that and he kept on texting me on my actual phone saying your phone is broken you know i just thought whatever you know it's nothing that deep um a month passed of that you know so august comes um around that time around august and um we resume our conversations by that time i started seeing someone else um we had started discussing um you know this thing because people actually get to know each other before they get into relationships you know and they get to know each other before they get um sexually active whatever you know that's what happens it's normal and that's exactly what had happened i started getting to know someone else and he was also the person that i was trying i was getting to know and this was a good june Jul july had blocked him august um and then september september came oh, oh yes something very very important august the 15th of 2017 i had a bilateral breast reduction for you guys most of you guys who understand what it's like to have like big, big boobs i had big boobs i think most of you guys who followed my career back then would know that i i had like massive breasts you know um and there was it was it was a it was person it's personal it was a personal thing um i didn't talk about it i had I had a pr ask me if i wanted to tell the media about it i said no um i wanted to keep it private as i've always been private and um I remember that day when I woke up from the hospital, he had come. He had come with a friend of his. And, um, you know, it was the 15th of August, 2017. It takes about eight to nine months for an injury like that to heal. You need to understand you're being cut all the way from under your armpit, under your breast. Your entire breast is being cut open and they are basically changing the shape so from august the 15th i was in bandages completely covered i didn't take off my bra for at least i think 10 months like when i say take off i did go to shower and bath without a bra but i couldn't do anything else and i remember having this conversation with my doctor at the time that if i was to get involved sexually with anybody um how long would it have to be and i was told that it has to, it has to be at least six weeks you know, and I was just saying that because you never know what happens. You know, you might be somebody that you're like, oh, yeah. But basically, um, that was what had happened. And he knew about that. Or I saw, I thought, because he was there. He was at the hospital. Um, fast forward to this very big, amazing event. Um, we get there. Uh, and I think... We were there like the whole night and I was talking to him and I was talking to the other person that I was getting to know. They were both in the same place. It was just, like I said, again, I'll emphasize, nothing sexual had happened. No discussions of sexual activities have happened. No one has spoken to me about, oh my gosh, let's have sex today. There was nothing of that sort. The relationship was so... It was just a getting to know you type of situation. I don't know what he told his friends. I don't know what he told his family, if any family was ever told. I do not know the context in which he discussed me. The only thing I know is the context in which he was to me. And I know this because I would... Anyway, let's forget about that. Because it's a fact. No sexual conversations no discussions no oh tomorrow you know nothing like that this man had never seen me naked before um it was just you understand what i'm saying now we get to this event and we are chilling and life goes on la di la di la di la di fast forward to around morning this happened i've seen a lot of conversations saying um this happened at night no it did not happen at night I've heard a lot of people say things like, how could you, um, 
continue dating a person that had raped you there's so many things that i've seen on social media um so i just wanted to just set the record straight today because i'm, I'm really exhausted with all the lies anyway um that morning we were making out making out it's just kissing um he had invited me to his hotel room it was morning we had never been alone together to to that extent where you could you could say oh yes now we can no um he invited me to his hotel room and i went because it was daytime and while this is happening um suddenly this person starts taking off my clothes um and he raped me i couldn't fight because I was in stitches I was bleeding in my stitches because it was a normal thing it happened all the time and if I had any kind of strain my stitches would just burst open sometimes and I'd bleed but that's what happened he raped me I hated him and at that moment I was afraid of him and I didn't stop being afraid of him till today just the thought of him terrifies me anyway go on um uh that night i think that day he kind of got me to go back to his place and you know it's fear and yes he terrifies me because he's he raped me he's my he's a rapist to me i do not know how he has treated other people i cannot speak for anyone else i can only speak for myself now he was he we never spoke we never hung out um we ended up breaking up because at that moment when he raped me to me it was like the most confusing thing like what do i do now am i with this person am i not you don't know if you've ever been in a situation like that you don't know how to classify it because no one's ever violated me before every person i have had intimate relations with has been consensual